Hey folks, my name is Robert. Welcome to the first episode of Building in Public. This is a very stripped down version of my normal videos where I'm going to be walking you through some of the things I've been working on as it relates to my passion project and a project that I've been working on and kind of documented on this channel a bit. Um, but this is much more stripped down. This is a much more raw, kind of unfiltered look at some of the things I've been working on and some of the things that are coming up for me. Uh, today I want to talk about three things, really. Uh, the first one is some design system improvements that I've been making to this prototype. Um, I want to talk a little bit about the prototype itself and some of the code and some of the things I've been launching there. And I want to talk a little bit about some of the reframing that I've been doing for this project. Now, when it comes to building in public, I think there's actually something really important about this, and that is that I give an opportunity to explain to you and give you a little bit of that insight into how I think, how I'm um, exploring things, why that I might be doing that, and some of those decisions that go into it. Building in public in terms of a kind of startup or a passion project or something like that, whatever you want to call this, is very much a kind of um, a, a idea that was birthed on Twitter, uh, LinkedIn, etc. And so doing this on YouTube, I don't know if I've seen people do it on YouTube. I'm sure they've done it, um, but it's going to be a little bit different. And so this will be a little raw. This will be a little unfiltered, um, but I'm hopeful that it'll give you a little bit of insight into how I'm thinking about things. It'll give me an opportunity to kind of just continue to engage and continue to make things um, and hopefully leads to some interesting conversation and some interesting feedback. So if you have thoughts, if you have ideas, um, I'd love to hear about it. I'd love to have a conversation about it. Um, do that in the comments. Now, also a version of this video goes out into my newsletter uh, the week before I post this video. So this is gonna be a new thing. I have used to have a newsletter. That's the way all of this stuff kind of got started way back in the day. Um, but now I am doing uh, a newsletter in a slightly different format where it's more of a summary of things that happened in the last month. So if you'd like to get the even rawer, unfiltered, more unfiltered version of this video, uh, you can sign up for my newsletter down in the description. Um, no payment, there's no paying, there's no spam. It's just once a month kind of thing or every now and then. So um, there's no pressure to do that, If just if you're interested. Um, so today I wanna to talk about three things. Design system improvements, why that's important. Um, some of the code prototype I've been working on and kind of an improvement to the, uh, let's call it the, the mental model of how I've been thinking about this project. Now, just as a brief summary, I'm working on a project called Healthcare OS, um, and this is essentially an electronic health record. Now, um, you can go back on my channel and find all the reasons why this is important and why there's things that EHRs are terrible right now. Um, but my goal is to make an EHR that's extremely user friendly, um, but also that can be one that kind of forms maybe a new kind of paradigm in the way clinicians and doctors use their their computers. So yes, there's a focus on user, being user friendly, but I think that this hopefully goes beyond what in most of the industry thinks about electronic health records and goes more into like the, the, the future of software within clinical uh, setting. Um, so I have been working on a code prototype that I am testing with clinicians. Actually, that's coming up in the next couple of weeks. So I'll be doing that testing, um, more, more in-depth testing. Um, but I also have been just doing the actual design for this. And one of the things that I have been working on, particularly in the last month, and if you follow me on LinkedIn or anywhere else, you have probably seen some of this, is that I've been refining the design system. So right here, we have kind of an overview of some of the uh, kind of uh, previous design system, some of the cards and some of the, the, the elements. You can see that there's a lot of color being used in the badges in particular. Um, the buttons have these very large rounded corners. Um, there's like lots of different gray uh, background areas and things like that. Um, now, I wouldn't look at this and say it's bad, but I definitely felt like there was a lot to be improved here and kind of refined. And so um, last month, I just kind of got this, this really strong itch to kind of go in and refine it. And more importantly, to create a lot more consistency and cohesion between different elements. So for instance, here um, you can see in the medication list versus the actual medication detail, we actually have two different ways of displaying like sections of content or lists of things. And you can even see that versus like the this uh, lipid panel um, kind of illustration card, um, even like this previous um, appointment where we're kind of writing out a bunch of text. There's just a lot of different styles, a lot of different font sizes, a lot of different font colors. Um, and again, these badges and, and kind of use of color kind of really stands in your face and is a little distracting, a little bit overwhelming. 
Uh, so I really wanted to come in and kind of simplify this and kind of um, make it a little bit more cohesive. So here's kind of the, um, I guess you might say the big overview kind of vision of, of how this is different. Um, so from the left to the right, we have kind of this new system, right? Um, and there's a little bit here that I'm going to gloss over simply because there's some like changes to the actual information architecture that I made as well that made some of this information redundant. So like you can see, I removed the name and the time from the header. It's just now and then the type of, of appointment. But you can see that I um, actually simplified the use of color. So we're just pulling out color into little small areas like an indicator dot or in the in the, um, in the icon for um, you know the the appointment type or into the button itself. Um, I've also simplified the way these lists work. So we now are using, I'm using wells here to uh, kind of represent these lists or these kind of areas of, of interest. Um, and then the items themselves. So this, uh, you know, right here, you know, you actually have this item is exactly the same as the items that make their way into the rest of the, uh, the, the system as well. As well as, you know, simplifying some of the, the roundedness, you can, I can tighten that up a little bit, made some of the text a little bit smaller, um, and kind of made all of the font sizes and font weights the same. I think the maximum size throughout the new system is like 16 pixels or one rim. Um, everything else is just smaller. And I think that's a, requirement of a system like this because there is so much information we have to cram on the screen but it also just helps to create a consistent level of hierarchy throughout the system um, so you can see here that this is just a, a kind of a smattering of the options um, and kind of the redesign so even like here like with this medication list this is actually the same list that you can see that's being used in this kind of lipid panel list and it's the same styling that's being used in the sections on the medication detail itself um, so the medication detail has the same font size, font color, font weight. Um, it's just that some of them are collapsible and some of them aren't, basically, is the main difference. Even with the color in the uh, badges, we're just calling out just a very small hit of color to draw the eye into a more important piece of information. Um, and actually here with this medication list, we could probably just remove these indicator dots altogether. Um, it's just again, a continual improvement that I'm thinking about here um, to, again, kind of make it so there's not as much that the user has to look at and it's not as much they have to understand. Now, the important thing about this is that this design system helps me build it much more quickly. I can build it in prototype. We're going to get to that in just a moment. But it also, I think, makes a consistent experience. This application is going to be extremely complex and there's going to be a lot of iterations of every single page. Having a consistent, simple design system is going to help me focus on solving the problems of what needs to be done rather than what it needs to look like. And so as I've been working on this and I've kind of refined a lot of the main pages of this prototype from what they were, um, this has helped me really kind of think about how to um, focus less on the visuals and the kind of what it looks like and more on the problem solving and more on the actual functionality that needs to be built. Um, now, uh, this is a design system though. So like it's supposed to be fluid and it's supposed to grow. It's supposed to kind of adapt. So as I work on things or as I do new things, that will certainly become a part of this. There is going to be a system or, or time when I do need to actually think about, okay, what do I need to add? What do I need to change? Um, and as I get there, having a base system that's a lot simpler than it was will make that easier. Um, and having a lot of these kind of preset components, components that are very consistent throughout, is going to make that easier to build and iterate on, particularly when it comes to code. Because, and I'm gonna, we'll, we'll transition this right now, code is the thing that really makes a difference. And so right here, this is in my browser. Uh, you can see this is a code prototype. Now this is a, a new kind of dashboard experience that I've designed. Um, I am going to make a more polished YouTube video about this at some point in the future, just how I did this, why I did it this way, etc. Um, but you can see here that this is all code. So this is slightly interactive. You can hover over things. Now, uh, not a lot of it's functional. This prototype is not ex all the way 100% functional. It's more to give an idea of like what this thing can be. Um, but you can see that there is a little bit more interact interactivity here. And this helps I think a little bit more to give someone a more convincing understanding of what it is that they're going to be using. Um, when you look at you know just basic static designs, it's much, much harder to, I think, imagine that for a user. And so being able to send them a link and have them pull this up into their browser on their computer, and then they can move their mouse around, they can interact with it, they can drag their window around, that gives them a much more realistic kind of immersive experience into what it is. So a couple of things that I've been doing this week or this month on this kind of prototype, I've been adding a lot of, I, you know, I did this new design system, I implemented this new launchpad page. Um, I also have been implementing some new kind of functionality here like search. Um, this is a new thing I'm pretty excited about where I can kind of fill in 
uh, different pieces of the search experience. And this is something that you know is, is universally available. And so these are just the quick little things that make it easier for a physician or a doctor, whoever it is, to get in and do the things they need to do. They don't have to spend a lot of time navigating between screens. Um, even this kind of quick actions menu um, is going, the idea here is that when you click, let's say new space or new patient, that you have a, very similar to the search, that you have this kind of inline on the page in context thing that pops up and that you can complete your kind of flow there without leaving and going to another area. Um, and I'm going to talk about why that's important in just a minute, but the reason, but just very briefly, if we have a physician who starts their own practice, frequently in the very beginning, they're the ones doing everything. They might have a nurse, they might have a receptionist, but for the most part, they're going to be doing a lot of the things. So if they want to bring in a new patient kind of on the fly, if they need to schedule an appointment on the fly, stuff like that, it's not, all, it's not very good to make them navigate between different places. And so we'll talk more about that in just a second, but that's kind of the goal here is that everything is kind of at your fingertips, no matter where you are. And that it's not hard to get to those really critical things like patients, appointments, spaces, and messages. Um, now, you can get in here and <clears throat> um, there's a link to this in the description, so you're welcome to click around and play with this. Um, but even just clicking around in here, I've really refined a lot of these things. So you can see that this design system is making its way in. Um, I'm running into a little bit of an issue here with some of the badging. I, I refactored how I did some of this um, uh, with the help of ChatGPT, actually. I refactored how I'm um, pulling in variants for all my components. If you're interested in that at some point in the future, please let me know. Um, it was actually really helpful because I do have so many different variants of all these badges. You can see there's lots of badge colors, there's lots of button colors, space colors. All these things are very consistent and they all use the same colors. And I was like, I'm tired of defining this everywhere, so I refactored that. Um, so I'm having a little bit of issue, kind of some of the, the complete refactor didn't make its way in here. But you can see here that, you know, again, like the this consistent design system is being um, pulled in. Everything is pretty much the same. Um, again, there are slight variations here or there, but it's it all feels very cohesive. Um, you know, I haven't actually filled in some of these things yet, but um, that's kind of on the roadmap on the to-do list here. Um, but again, you know, it's just kind of making some of these things very, very simple, very easy to understand. You know, if, I, if there's a history of this medication, um, maybe I don't need to see that all the time, right? I just need to see when it was updated. Maybe I need to see the full detail list, which would, you know, look more like this. Again, more complex component that I haven't designed and built yet, um, but that's coming soon. Um, and you can see here that even within this system right here, like this is kind of a new way of me kind of creating some information architecture to help anchor the user into where they are. Um, this did not used to exist. And now if you were to go into like the note taking, um, you still have that context and that's a consistency thing that's being maintained throughout. Um, this is something that I'm going to do a much deeper video on, much deeper dive on, but you can see that I'm kind of working on how to make documentation a little bit faster and easier. This is very old designs, very old implementation, so I probably won't do much with this in the future, or I'll probably rethink this completely actually, um, but it's something that I'm thinking about. Um, also, this patient um, kind of sidebar is a new thing, and so a lot of this for me has just been figuring out how to actually build these things in a way that is um, that makes sense. Um, even just last night, adding in some of these things like this kind of stepper wizard to for you know someone to do an intake on a patient and things like that. Um, so this is where things are at with the code prototype. Like I said, I'm going to be testing this with some uh, users here in the next couple of weeks. Very excited to get their feedback and their thoughts. Um, so the last thing that I want to just kind of briefly discuss here is the idea of what this actual product is and like how to think about this. Um, there are a lot of incumbents in this industry. Uh, so the, the biggest ones, Epic, Cerner, and Athena, have a pretty good hold on the market at, kind of at the top end. So most big hospital systems in the US and around the world really are using Epic. Um, the VA is using Cerner in different places. Um, a lot of kind of mid-level or mid-size multi-specialty groups use Athena. And so there, there's kind of this very strict hold within these companies and um, for these companies. And a lot of clinicians that I talk to often refer to these companies. So like these are the common ones that I hear about. Occasionally I hear about some of the smaller ones that are specialty specific or free or things, something like that. But for the most part, most physicians, particularly if they're working in the health system, have experience working with with and using Cerner, Athena, or Epic. And so one of the things that I've been thinking about is trying to remove my own preconceived notions about what this thing should be from what Epic and Athena and Cerner actually built. 
Um, and what I mean by that is thinking about the product a little bit differently. Um, so when you think about, or if, you, if um, you, know, you ever talk to somebody who uses one of these big pieces of EHR's software, um, there are lots of modules, there's lots of training, there's lots of software there. It's not just one piece of software that you build or buy, it's a lot of different little modules that you kind of install and then different people, different departments, different people have different levels of access to those modules. And the challenge with this is that when we think about trying to kind of disrupt that, as you might say, um, the issue is that that is not very realistic because those incumbents have been building that software for 20 or 30 years and it's not realistic for a small company, an independent person, independent software company, whatever you want to call it. It's not realistic for someone to disrupt that. And so the question is, how do you actually think about that? I've been following a gentleman on LinkedIn for a while who's building his own kind of independent practice. And he's not taking insurance. He's a direct care, direct pay uh, practice. Um, so everybody is cash pay. Um, and one of the things that was really interesting to me was that he was talking about how he actually has a HIPAA compliant Google workspace. So he signed a BAA with Google and that Google workspace is now HIPAA compliant. So he's complying with federal regulations around patient data. But all of his messaging, all of his calendaring, all of his notes, all of his docs are basically just stored in a Google workspace, like any of us who might have our own Gmail account. We have docs, we have calendar, we have email, we have hangouts, we have all these little kind of modules, if you will, of pieces of software, and we have access to them very quickly and easily without having to buy something else or add something else. They're just there, essentially. And thinking about it that way or kind of having that realization, I, it was really, really powerful for me because it gave me an understanding that this software is not just about um, all of these different modules, all of these things that need to be done. And there's a lot that that Google, or, that Google Workspace does not provide that has to be built in, like e-prescribing or ordering or imaging or things like that. But those kind of base functions of note-taking, calendars, and chat, be that email or instant messenger or something like that, those are kind of those base functions. And then everything else is just kind of an expanded integration on top of that, essentially, for the most part. Um, now, this is not universally true. If you were to go to a hospital, this definitely would not be true. Um, but for an independent physician who's starting their own practice, maybe they're direct care, maybe maybe they're gonna take insurance, something like that, um, this type, this way of doing something, this way of building and thinking about the software, I think is a much simpler and easier approach. Um, so I've been taking that into consideration as I've been building this. Again, I'm not totally sure how that's going to impact the final product. Um, but it makes a big difference in my own mental model of how I think about this. It's basically just a series of apps that kind of mimic a Google workspace, but make it so that you can flow through different tasks a little bit more easily because let's be honest, no one just takes a look at their email and then goes to look at docs. The, the physician's workflow, the physician's day is too chaotic to have those things kind of siloed in such a way for the most part. So there's gotta be a little bit more fluidity in how they can think about those things. So anyway, that's my, um, that's my update for this month. Um, this is a long video. Thank you for sticking around if you stick around to the end. Um, if you have thoughts, if you have ideas, if you have feedback, I'd love to hear it. Feel free to leave a comment. Um, you're welcome to uh, kind of tell me that all this is dumb, this is not a good idea. I'm, I'm always up to hear those things. I'm always very interested in hearing about different opinions and things like that. Um, but thank you for watching. Um, if you haven't, I'd love to get your subscription or like on the video, but uh, no pressure from me. I uh, just appreciate you watching. Thanks a bunch, and I'll see you real soon.